Good morning. Welcome back to podcast episode number four the Path to Warren podcast. In this episode, I am going to share about the pine straw business I started and sold um, right out of college. I ended up selling it. Uh, so in episode three, I shared about the lawn service called Matt's Lawn Service that I had. And uh, my allergist, as I shared, told me that I don't care what you do, but you're not going to be cutting grass anymore. Um, I had no choice but to get out of the lawn service. And it was kind of funny because when I was maintaining properties, uh, you know, cutting grass and edging and weed eating and blowing uh, their property, I would get asked all the time, hey, do you guys do mulch or hey you guys do pine straw and I just had to turn them down Um, dad at the time advised me that you know you need to do you probably need to do one thing and do it really well and not get into you know many different many different things Um, and sure enough that was the right decision at the time with the lawn service, I strictly focused on uh, mow, edge, weed, eat, and blow. That was the four, th- the four things that kept it simple. I got to be really efficient at those four things. Um, so whenever somebody would ask, hey, do you do mulch or pine straw? I just you know, politely said, no, I'm sorry, I don't. And uh, there, was a, there was a gentleman that lived at the end of my neighborhood outside of my neighborhood but he lived um at the end of the street and his company was called roots and shoots <laughs> i thought that was a great name but he he actually had some pine straw sitting out in his driveway one day and i stopped by and said hey uh you know i'm in high school and i've got this lawn service and i get asked all the time do i do any kind of mulch or pine straw but I don't have a source I've got nobody to source this pine straw Uh, you know do you want to do this business or do you have uh, somebody that you can point me in the right direction because I've I've got these clients wanting an answer and sure enough he gave me the name and number of his Hispanic pine straw supplier named Montanez Dionisio Uh, Montanez was I think he said he was 76 years old and uh, he had one one old old probably 84 bottle truck um, a big old truck that he would just fill the truck full of pine straw he didn't have a trailer that he used he just had a big old truck and uh, so I gave Montanez a call and ordered a hundred bales and sure enough he delivered them and I paid him $3 a bale. Um, but I didn't do this until right after the allergist told me, hey Matt, I don't care what you do, you gotta quit cutting grass because of my allergies. Because of my allergies. Um, I didn't even look into buying any kind of pine straw or mulch or getting into this and, until I was told I had to make a change. Well. I just, as I was deciding to sell the business and as I was working on either shutting down or, or selling the business, I started to figure out what, I'm gonna, what am I going to do next? And I wanted to do something that was a complimentary business, but not a, a competing business. I, I, I didn't want to, obviously I didn't want to go cut grass <laughs> down the road Um, because I couldn't cut grass. So I wanted to do something still that worked outside that I could use these contacts that I'd already accumulated. And uh, I had a little database going. You know, I had word around the neighborhoods and word around my community that I was a good, high-quality lawn guy. Um, So what I did next was over the course of... Um, probably two months I would all I would think about 
uh, in class as I was sitting there, sitting in class, you know, daydreaming about the business because I love to do it so much. Um, I, I, I came up with the name Pine Straw Plus. So pine straw is one word and, and then plus being, you know, we're going to do other things, you know, pine straw plus pulling weeds, pine straw plus trimming shrubs, pine straw plus edging your property, um, whatever needed to be done along with the pine straw. If I had the time and the labor, I would just add on those services. So it worked out great. So that's where the name plus, you know, pine straw plus came from. Um, but if I was really busy with pine straw sales, which was the bulk, you know, the bread and the butter of of the business, if I was really busy and I didn't have time or labor, then I would not upsell. But I tell you what, you know, I'm selling 30 to $50 to put a nice clean edge on someone's property, um, or, or, you know, charging 200 bucks to prune all the shrubs before you put the pine straw down. I mean, that's the easiest sell in the world. You know, I'm sitting there, I, I've already convinced the customer to go go with the pine straw order and, and I've given them a quote of say 50 bales of pine straw. I would charge uh, anywhere between six and $7 a bale. Very rarely did, did I charge $7. It was normally about six or 650. Um, so I was getting the, the pine straw sale, but right before I would, you know, after he agreed upon that, I'd be walking around the property with him and I'd, I'd point over here and I'd say, you know, those shrubs over there, it really would look better if we could get those trimmed for you before we put the pine straw down. It sure would look better. And they'd say, oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> so, uh, or, you know, we'd be walking around the property and I'd say, you know, Mr. Smith, I tell you, we really ought to pull these weeds over here. We really ought to pull these weeds or these vines up out of the shrubs before we, uh, you know, put this pine straw down. It sure would look better. And they would be, <laughs> they think for a second and they'd say, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. How much you, how much would you charge to do that? So the upsell of the the plus the upsell uh, you know of the added services while I'm already there I, I'm, I think that was one of the smartest plays that I did it was genius uh, because then I as people would ask hey what's the plus part about I would I would I'd be able to explain it pretty quickly and and they'd say oh well yeah that makes great sense so after I found a buyer of Matt's Lawn Service, his name was Billy Reed, and he he owned Lawn Care Plus. Down the road, it was a commercial lawn care company, and they bought me out. Um, I had a deal with him that if 70% of the clients did not roll over to his business, you know, like if... I, I had 33 clients at the time. It was between 33 or 35. I'm not sure exactly today, but uh, we, I put a little clause in the contract that if if everybody didn't go with him, you know, for example, if 50% of the people did not decide to use Billy, that we would renegotiate the contract. Um, and I used that as leverage because I told him, hey, I want to make this work. I, I'm going to go to the clients. Like, for example, I sent a letter out to all of the clients explaining what I was doing and saying how I, I, I'm in this with Billy to make it work and that uh, I, I want to see it work out between the two of you guys. And so there was a, there was skin in the game for me to try to make this work with um, – you know, them having a good, a, a good lawn care company and not just be left out in the wind. And also for Billy to be able to realize that he's, he's going to be buying something and I'm going to work to make sure it, it, it all works out for the better. Um, but sure, sure. Not, like I, I never heard the actual quantity of how many ended up using him, but he never came back and wanted to renegotiate. Um, I, 
I, I'm pretty sure most all of them went with him, um, at least for a little while. So, um, within a month of, of selling Matt's lawn service, I, I, I rolled out Pine Straw Plus. So, it was, uh, you know, less than 30 days uh, after I got it. After I signed the papers with Billy, we it allowed me to to help him for a few weeks, and then I was off to the races on the next venture of Pine Straw Plus. Uh, man, this was a great model, I tell you. It, it it was something that I would highly recommend for for a young a young kid in high school. Um, so. What what happened over that first couple months of the lawn serve or a couple months of the pine straw business? I I ended up selling eighty nine hundred bales of pine straw uh, that first year, and the first year I, I mean like from the time I sold the business to before I went to Clemson, I had eighty nine hundred bales sold, and it was it was something that I was like, hey, this is really good. This is this is obviously working. Um, I I don't want to quit this, but but I got to go off to Clemson. <laughs> I was very grateful to be um, uh, enrolled in, in, in the Clemson. I didn't get in at first. I, I was one of these kids that was about a C plus or a B minus student. I didn't have excellent SAT scores by a long shot. Uh, I took the SAT a couple times, but still didn't make that great. Um, you know, I, academics and studying at that age was just something that didn't really, I didn't see much relevance in chemistry and um, I, I don't know, school wasn't quite my thing at the time. Um, you know, today I love to learn, and that's all I can do to 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 soak up as much as I can. But I was I got accepted to Anderson College, and I had convinced myself that oh, it'd be great to to. It's almost like I justified it to myself, but I got accepted to Anderson, and he, I said, oh yeah, I look forward to being a, a big fish in a little pond. <laughs> that's a bunch of ego talking there but uh, I basically had convinced myself that I would go to Anderson for uh, maybe a, a year or, or, or two and as soon as I could I would transfer over to to Clemson where I really wanted to end up and, and have a a um, you know to say I graduated from Clemson was the end, end goal uh, and something about Anderson College did not really click with me. It was very religious, uh, and uh, it was very strict. It was very, uh, I don't know, not to bash it. I'm not trying to bash it. I, I just, it, it didn't quite click, but I was willing to make it work for a year in order to get to Clemson and use it as a way of getting out of town. Uh, I, I was set on not going to University of South Carolina basically because I knew it was 20 minutes from my parents' house and I just had to get away. <laughs> I had to escape. Um, so, sure enough though, like a month or two before it was time to, to move away, I got a letter from Clemson saying that, hey, we would like to offer you uh, enrollment in Clemson if you would enroll in what they called the STEP program, the S-T-E-P, the STEP program. And this was made for people that were planning to stay in South Carolina. Uh, they thought that this person was going to stay in South Carolina and stay in agri agriculture. So I 
had applied. I, I was told that the, the best way to get into Clemson is to do something like agricultural undeclared, that that was the major to get into Clemson with because they needed more people in agri- agriculture. And so, you know, being a guy that had a lawn service and sold it and a pine straw business that was doing well, I, I kind of got it. I, I dig that. <laughs> You know, I, I could relate to those agriculture guys. Um, I kind of had my little truck and had the the little redneck thing going on in high school. You, you know, I could I could get into the agriculture world. Um, I fit much more into that than I did the engineering side of things. I could tell you that for sure. Um, so Clemson accepted me in the agricultural undeclared major and the step program which meant that I had to go to summer school before the fall semester and summer school was a way of getting these students that were like average in their school grades (laughs) people just like me it was a way of getting us all together and there were about 40 of us Uh, we all got together and lived in Burns which is the building one of the high-rise student dorms in Clemson and we all lived there and we we took classes together but the 40 of us got to know Clemson ahead of everybody else we got to get settled in kind of get a lot of our party in out of our system or so that was the theory Um, but we took like three or four classes it wasn't much load at all uh, we, we had to take CU 101, Clemson University 101. Uh, it was just, it was such a great experience. I, I'm so grateful for it. Uh, and I can't talk more. I, you know, I, I can't stop talking about it really because it was such a, a great experience for me. Uh, but w- when I had the Pine Straw business and I got accepted to... Clemson, it was like, whoa, this is great. But this pine straw business is too good to quit. So I decided to tell all of my clients, hey, I'm going off to Clemson. I'm just, let me still be your pine straw guy. Um, I'm going to be back, you know, spring break, fall break, Christmas break, um, summer break, obviously. I, I'm going to be back and I want to work this, this business. Please call on me for pine straw in the future um, j- just stay in touch kind of thing and sure enough my client list grew and grew and grew and I, I would come home uh, freshman year I I never went away to Cancun and uh, on spring break you know a lot of the college kids they'll, they'll run away to Myrtle Beach or spend their fall break, you know, going to some crazy uh, remote location to get away and spend a bunch of money. That was not me. I would make enough during spring break and fall break just delivering and spreading pine straw that it would support me the rest of the semester. Um, And then, you know, one or two weekends where whenever I was planning to come home, basically, I would line up a day's worth of work, you know, have seven or eight deliveries of pine straw. Um, I did deliveries as opposed to spreading on those weekends because I could do a lot more of them and make good money just riding around in my truck, stopping in your driveway, stacking up 50 bales of pine straw to whatever you ordered, and then going over to the next client. Um, so spring break, fall break, Christmas break, I would maximize this database. I would send them letters in the mail directly to the people that had ordered in the past and say, Hey, I'm going to be home on this weekend. Would you like pine straw? Um, I, I got to be known during my college career. I got to be known for, um, you know, stepping out of class or, Actually, I didn't do too much of leaving class, but in between classes, I would, uh, you know, I I wasn't the one stopping off in the cafeteria and sitting there killing time. I would 
actually be calling back clients. You'd find me sitting out on the picnic table out front of the agricultural uh, classrooms. I'd be sitting out there on the phone with my um, Pine Straw Plus order forms, f- filling out who whoever was placing the order. Um, man, Pine Straw Plus grew and grew. I got to where I had uh, 200 clients. I had 300 clients in my sophomore year, 400 clients in my junior year. By my senior year of college, I had 737 clients that were ordering pine straw once or twice a year. And I was really, I was racking it in. Um, I, it was it was a perfect model. I could go to school. I could do this whenever I could. If I wanted more business, I would pump up the marketing and the direct mailing pieces. If I wanted to slow it down, I just would lay off of that. Um, so I knew when I was in college, I, I really told myself, okay, I'm not going to graduate from a four-year school like Clemson and here comes ego talking, you know. <laughs> That's one of my character defects, as you know. But I, I'm not going to graduate college and be slinging pine straw for the rest of my life. Uh, that's just something that is not going to happen. Uh, I thought that I needed a, 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 a bigger job, a, a better career, doing something else. And I was grateful for what it had done for me, but I was ready to, to give it up and go on to something else. Uh, quite frankly, the, the, the pollen in those bales of pine straw, I got to where I had to wear a mask. <laughs> My allergies started to get to me as I did a lot of the spreading myself. Um, I, I had my junior and, se- and senior year, I had a buddy, Sean, who was going to USC. Sean was a high school friend of mine that uh, he had a- an explorer, and he could hook up to my little trailer. <laughs> uh, I, ha- I hired Sean to make deliveries for me throughout my uh, it, I think it was sophomore, junior, and senior year. So, if I had some simple, de- some simple deliveries that did not require me to be there, didn't require me to give an estimate, um, I would email Sean the the morning of the deliveries where he needed to go. He would put it in his GPS, drive there stack the pine straw bales off onto their the end of their driveway or in their flower bed and I would have the client just mail me the check well they got to where the whoever was checking the mail for the fraternity house because I was in Alpha Gamma Rho AGR fraternity which is an agricultural social fraternity at Clemson uh, my fraternity brothers would would like think it was amazing (laughs) they were shocked that I was uh, here at Clemson and receiving $400 or $500 check you know from somebody that had gotten 100 bales of pine straw delivered and and back in Columbia Um, I, I would mail my buddy Sean a check from Clemson so out of my fraternity house all through college, I, I ran this pine straw business, and you know it wasn't it wasn't surprising to go down and check my little mail slot. You know, by the front door of the fraternity house, we had these like little cubbies where people would collect mail and put it in there for you. Um, so I, I'd go down and I'd have three or four checks um, on the way to class. I'd, I'd stop by the bank. The bankers got to know me there. <laughs> or the tellers at least, but I would deposit my, my checks into the bank on the way to class. And then I'd write my my buddy Sean a check and stick it in the mail for him. Um, that was that was a, a really good way of making money. Um, I charged $3, no, I would buy the bales for $3 a bale from the Hispanic suppliers, uh, 
I he got to where I had one white guy supplier. His name was Big Boy. Uh, he was a, a about 350, 400 pounds. Uh, but he had a little cartel of pine straw coming out of the the pillion. Um, I think it was pillion area, but it was it it was out in the remote uh, area of Lexington County, about an hour drive from Columbia. But these Hispanic guys would go out into the fields and bale up the pine straw. Um, the way I understood it, the three dollars that they charged me was kind of neat. Um, one dollar, the, the guy who would bring it to me would get three dollars from me. I would I'd write him a check for, let's just say I got a thousand bales of pine straw at a time. That was kind of the average order. I would say, hey, Attilio, I need a thousand bales of pine straw. He'd bring me a thousand bales and I would pay him $3,000. Um, one dollar a bale of that he would have to pay normally on average to the landowner so these guys that had several hundred acres of pine trees they would um, they would get paid for the pine straw that was on their property well this one dollar went to the landowner one dollar went to the guy that actually bailed the pine straw like and, and then one dollar went to the guy who managed the business and made the delivery so there was normally three or four or twenty however many guys he had working for him there was always a crew out there bailing pine straw and all they did was was go early in the morning, rake out. Um, they had to bail it while it was dry. You can't you can't bail it up while it's wet or it'll rot like crazy. But they would go out early in the morning, rake out the the um, the pine straw into huge piles, sift out the sticks and the pine cones, and he'd get paid a dollar a bale. Well, if he could do 15 bales an hour, you know that's 15 bucks an hour to his, a Hispanic guy. Most of them were undocumented, uh, but they were working in the middle of the field and, you know, th th they had no need to supply any kind of paperwork. Um, I, I had an interesting business, business because it was kind of like I didn't know or didn't care who they had bailing up the pine straw. All I cared about was that they were delivered into the fenced in area behind my dad's company my dad had a uh, say 100 feet by 100 feet I don't know exactly how big it was but it was a large fenced in area to me at the time and he allowed me to store the pine straw there it had barbed wire you know, three strands of barbed wire around the top had a little fenced in area with a gate and a lock I could go as I, I pleased um and I would have them stack the pine straw right there. Um, I I didn't really care who they got to hire the pine, you know, who they paid to bail up the pine straw. Um, at one point, I, I got on to it's kind of interesting how it all evolved because I started out with this guy Montanez Dionisio, like I said, um, when that guy Brian gave me his phone number. Um, I, I started out with him, you know, very small, just getting 70 bales or 100 bales at a time, just real small orders. Um, I only ordered what I had sold, so I was it was really low risk for me. Um, but it got to where that was not safe enough. I, I needed to have a little extra because there's nothing worse than somebody saying, oh, hey, I, I need 30 more, and you not have it. Um, so I ended up stockpiling a couple hundred extra so that if that would happen or I can't tell you how many times the neighbor would come out and be like, Hey, uh, I, I saw what you did over here at Mr. Smith's yard. Can you give me a quote for my yard? And I, <laughs> I just needed to have pine straw on hand. So once I got a little 
money in my pocket, I, I would reinvest into the business by stocking up on pine straw. Um, and it was also a, 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 a uh, insurance policy for me because, <coughs> excuse me, if if I got delivered a hundred bales, but twenty of them were bad, I I was screwed if I had no extra. So I needed to be able to set those twenty aside, be able to leave them there, call my supplier, and be like, hey. I'm not paying for these 20 bales. You need to come back and get them and swap them out on the next time for some good pine straw. That happens sometimes. They they would try to slip in, you know, poor quality pine straw. Um, it needed to be the bright red, orange um, color. The long needle. I only sold long needle. This is kind of interesting. My dad helping me, you know, with the branding of the business. He said, you know, I think you ought to, I think what would be best is if you, tried to only sell the highest quality you know just just sell c- clean long needle bales of pine straw don't get in the business of this stuff you get at Lowe's or Home Depot or Walmart you know they have pine straw but it is it's short needle it's a lot of times been sitting in a container or a or a 18 wheeler for you know six months and it's half decayed it's got gray and mold inside of it, pine straws and sticks. What if you, he, he said, what if you could become known as the guy with the best quality pine straw in town? You could, you could charge the most and you'd have all the business you could handle. And I thought that sounded like a, like a no brainer to me. So I would constantly push my suppliers to, Hey, I, you going to be, you going to bring me some pine straw today. And they say, Oh, see si, Mateo, see si, Mateo see pine straw and i say solo bien solo bien you know only the good only good and uh i got known as the guy that really had the best pine straw in town uh but something was different about pine straw plus something was different about this this college student that had had uh you know, I, I hired my American college buddies. <laughs> uh, something about, you know, in, in these middle class to wealthier neighborhoods, which I targeted, obviously, because they had the money to spend on mulch. Um, something about a college student with polo shirts on, with Pine Straw Plus, or I had screen printed these uh, orange to go with Clemson. That was the that was the theme here. But orange was in my logo. Uh, I had these these bright orange shirts made with Pine Straw Plus in the you know my big logo with the phone number on the back of them. And my everybody on my crew that would deliver Pine Straw or put out the Pine Straw with me. Everybody had these orange shirts on that looked really professional. Something really stood out in the neighborhood. I mean, it was it was like the, these guys are different, you know. These guys are not the um, the industry had gotten to where on a on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday you'd get this knock on the door to two african american guys in an old beat up truck with a bunch of loose pine straw in the back of the of the truck that they had probably stolen somewhere um and i hate to like you know put race into it but that is exactly what it was these people would 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 knock on the door and an old beat up truck uh look you know on drugs or or drunk and they would try to sling you these pine straw <laughs> loads of loose pine straw that you didn't really know what was in there. Uh, I got to where I realized sometimes they would have tires and cinder blocks and things in the back of the pine straw bed and they would sell the load of pine straw, but it wasn't even a full load of pine straw. You know, they'd have things under the pine straw to take up space. And it was loose, so you didn't know how compacted, you know, down it was. But they'd say, oh, I'll sell you this load for $200, $200. And they'd try to sling, sling this load of pine straw. And sure enough, 
they'd get half of your yard finished and oh i need to go back and get another load man i need to get another load of pine straw i'll be back i'll be back and it you know before you know it it's drawn out over two or three days you're up to six eight eight hundred dollars on pine straw you don't really know what you've gotten you don't know how many bales it would have equated to if you'd have gotten bales yourself um, and then the fact that it's loose in the back of their truck, the pine straw would just lay down and it, it didn't give that fluff. It, it didn't give a, a nice six to eight inch thick pine straw look that came from the, the bales that I had. Um, you, you, you were not able to really tuck it. You know, if it was loose and they put it out, it just kind of fell down after the dew laid on it from the sun and the, the, the dew from the night. Once that settled on the pine straw, uh, it laid down. I don't know how else to explain it, but it looked real flat. Yeah, it had a good color on it, maybe. Uh, but most of the time it had a good color on it, but these guys, in order to save on their labor, uh, you know, the Hispanic pine straw suppliers that would supply, I mean, they didn't have a labor problem with these African-American guys that tried to supply the pine straw at the time. They were, they were known for cutting the corners and, uh, they would, they would just throw with pitchforks. They'd throw this loose pine straw in the back of their truck with no way of gauging it. They'd throw a tarp on the back of it and then just go knock it on doors. They had no database. They had no way of sending out postcards. They had no way of, you know, keeping track of their customers or their phone numbers. They didn't care. They just wanted cash. They just wanted to get cash for that order. So I'm telling you all this to say that when I showed up with, as a, a 20 year old or 19 year old kid with a clean truck, I tried to keep my truck clean, you know, washed it. I had magnets on the side of my truck that said Pine Straw Plus. I had a nice professional sign that was reflective. Um, it was a white sign that I screwed into the back of the ramp on my little trailer. I had a six by 10 trailer. And on the back of it, I had a reflective white with red letters, Pine Straw Plus. Uh, with my phone number and it said clean long needle pine straw and then under that it said delivered slash spread so delivered spread clean long needle pine straw pine straw plus 803-600-3548 I can't tell you how many times I'd be riding down the interstate of I-26 or wherever riding down the road and get a call from somebody and I'd pick up the phone Hey, Matt, this is Jimmy. I'm about three cars behind you. I saw your trailer with this good-looking pine straw on it. How much do you charge? And I'd say, oh, it's $4 a bale delivered or $6 delivered and spread. And they'd say, oh, man, that sounds good. Can you deliver to Irmo or can you follow me to my house? And I'd say, sure. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I think one reason why pine straw and I got along so so well you know the whole pine straw business model and 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 Matt Warren got along so well is because it was a very impulsive buy it was something like oh my gosh it's Super Bowl weekend we're supposed to have people over I need to have my yard look good honey get some pine straw out in the yard you know make the yard look good <laughs> or I would put it out in this neighborhood that was my favorite called Ascot. I'd put it out in, in somebody's yard and the Joneses effect would just ripple and take, take, you know, this huge tidal wave. I'd make this one guy's yard look so good. All of a sudden his, the wife next door would come out and say, Oh, that looks so good, honey. Why don't you, why don't you walk over and talk to that young boy over there and see if he can do our yard, and make it look that good. So one of the smartest things I did was I, I, I got these $20 uh, yard signs made. And I had about six of them. But you know how if, if somebody's trying to get elected for office, you know, they put these little yard signs with metal stakes in their yard or in people's yards. 
uh, I got one made that said Pine Straw Plus at the top. It had my logo. It said Pine Straw Plus can make your yard look this good. And it had my number. <laughs> and, it, and that's all it said on both sides. And I would ask my client, I'd say, hey, uh, hey, Jimmy, you know, I just spread this pine straw in your yard. Do you mind if I put this sign in here for about two or three days? And I'll be back to pick it up. I, I, I promise I'll be back to pick it up. I'm not going to leave it here for too long. And they all said yes. <laughs> I mean, not everybody said yes. I, but I don't know of anybody today that I, I can remember that said, no, don't put this yard yard sign in my yard that talked about how great their yard is. It's kind of like getting yard of the month, you know. Who's going to argue with that? Um but the yard would look so good and they were so happy at the time when I'd go get the check after I'd get their check I'd say do you mind if I put this in, in your yard for just a day or two your two or three days I, I really would appreciate it and they would say oh sure Matt that's fine I don't care and the Joneses effect you know the Joneses effect is when you're trying to keep up with the Joneses and you see that the Joneses got a new car or the Joneses got a new boat or the Joneses just got a pool in the backyard. You want to keep up with the Joneses in order to, to, to be as good as the Joneses. You got to buy a pool or a boat. Well, that works. And the pine straw business, that killed it. Um, and sometimes if the customer wasn't there or if I didn't feel like coming all the way back to... Um, to pick up my yard sign a lot of times I would uh, just put the sign out while I was working so the customer would be away at work or something I would just stick the yard sign out there in the front so as people would drive by and they'd see my truck and my trailer and the yard sign and see a good looking you know clean cut crew out there putting out pine straw they would call they'd have a number to call um so that you know, yard signs, truck magnets, I can't tell you that h- how many times this, these $80, I think they're about 80 bucks. I had a, on the side of my, my little red truck, I had a nice clean cut, um, sign on the, on, on both sides. And then on the back of the tailgate, I had a sign that said Pine Straw Plus delivered and spread and had, had my phone number there. I think they might have been a hundred dollars, you know, total for those three magnets. Um, those really helped to spread the word. Uh, the, the polo shirts, the hats. I had ha- Pine Straw Plus, you know, nice um, uh, hats on. All of that was what I, you know, I was creating a brand. I was creating a brand that one day I could sell. I, I believe the entrepreneur's dream is to create something that is marketable, that is that can be sold. Um, so I was in Clemson my senior year. And I convinced my economics professor, because at the time, I, after my freshman year, my big brother in the fraternity... Um, Jack, uh, J- you know, Jack c- convinced me that hey, I think you ought to be an agricultural economics major. I said, w- w- really? I said, why is that? He said, well, you've got the agricultural piece. You know, you, you're you've really done well with the Pine Straw Plus business and the lawn service. You love working outside. You've always you know been a plant guy. Love working outside with your hands and getting dirty. Uh, I think you love the agriculture piece, but yet the economic side of things, you know, the business side of making money, I think you'd really do well with the economic side of this as well. So I said, well, that sounds neat. So I read up on it and I ended up changing my major from agriculture undeclared to agricultural economics. And about my junior year, I added on with a minor with business administration. Uh, I really enjoyed the paperwork side of running my business. I really enjoyed the database part of it. I liked um, 
you know, keeping organized files of clients and the, 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 the names, the phone numbers, email addresses, the business administration side of running the business, the business management, the office management side of things. That was a crucial function of the business that I learned and loved. So it was only like two or three more classes that I needed to take my senior year in order to, ha- to be able to graduate with a minor in business administration. Uh, that's, that's what I did. So my senior year in one of my, my advanced economics classes, I, I convinced my professor to, uh, he, he assigned everybody a, a senior project. This is your senior project. You need to pick a company and get all of all of the the numbers and the data of their sales, their their cost of materials, you know, pick up a, a product or pick a business and and really learn Excel. So I attribute all of my Excel, you know, Microsoft Excel spreadsheet knowledge to that senior year. Um, that senior project where I really learned about graphing and charting and how to create pie charts and give presentations using PowerPoint and these um, crazy phenomenal spreadsheets that I learned to create. But I didn't want to just pick a random business. You know, that, that was of no interest to me. I, got, I did not get excited about picking anything else but I had all this data from my business, from Pine Straw Plus. So believe it or not, I met with my professor after class one day. I said, hey, I'm, I'd really like to just use my business. Do you mind if I use Pine Straw Plus as my senior project? And he gave me permission. I, I was the only one that he gave permission to work on his own business. Well, I was the only one that had a business. <laughs> so in this economics class, I spent about nine, I don't know how long it was. It, it felt like nine months, but it probably wasn't that long. But I, I dissected and made these nice pie charts and was able to look at, I had a pie chart that showed where, where my clients were located. You know, how many were in Columbia? How many were in Lexington? How many were in Ballantyne? How many were in Irmo? And I, I had, you know, the, uh, the radius. I drew a circle around the headquarters of where I was distributing pine straw, and I could plot all of the clients and see where they were located around town. So I knew where to focus my marketing efforts. I didn't. It made no sense to to put, even if it was a really nice neighborhood in Blythewood that was 35 minutes away. It made no sense to market to Blythewood when I had 80% of my clients right here in Irmo and Columbia and Lexington. So I focused on you know, that information and doing, spending that time focusing on my own business allowed me to see uh, what was the average price I was charging for, for customer? What was the average pine straw order? You know, was it 20 bales or was it 50 bales or was it 100 bales? What was the average, um, you know, delivered quantity? What was the average spread quantity? So you had the average neighborhood with the average yard. All of this really helped me in my sales because I was able to say, you know, hey, Mr. Smith, our average sales are about 50 bales a yard. You have about an average yard. I think it's going to be about 50 bales, maybe 60 bales. And that would be able to help me in the sale and give him, give him a ballpark. So... After I worked on this business, making all these spreadsheets of you know, pie charts showing where all the money was going, it, I was able to graphically show a dollar goes to the landowner, a dollar goes to the guy that, that bails up the pine straw, a dollar goes to the owner of the, the delivery, you know, the wholesale pine straw business. Then a if I was charging $4 a bale and I'd buy them for three, I would make a dollar a bale. So if I was delivering a hundred bales of pine straw to your property, I'd make a hundred dollars. It took me like 20 minutes 
to unload the, the bales and maybe 20 minutes to get there to your property, 20 minutes to get back to the office, that's an hour. So in an hour, I'd make a hundred dollars. <laughs> I mean, that, that sounds like something I ought to go back and do today. You know, it sounds so good. Um, but, but that was where the money was. I, I was able to show how that worked out. Uh, and if I was spreading the pine straw, I got $2 more. So I, I got $6 a bale if I was delivering and spreading the pine straw. All my competitors were charging like $7. I had one guy, and he's still doing it. Um, you, you know, one landscaping company in the industry, really known for high prices and high quality work, was charging $8 a bale. I think now it's like eight fifty a bale. I was charging six, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> so, so the client's sitting there saying, for six dollars, and he's a clean cut, white male, and in college trying to earn a buck. Yeah, let's go with this guy. I mean, it was it was kind of the the perfect little model. Um, I I believe my senior year, I I was told by somebody, hey. I, 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 Actually, looking back on it now, I think it was my wife who sent me something that she found that said there's a South Carolina Collegiate Entrepreneurship Award. Um, it was actually, I think, the Clemson University Collegiate Entrepreneurship Award. So what that meant was anybody who had a business in college that was an entrepreneur could submit an application to try to to win this award um, as the best business college student in the university. Um, well, well, that's what I did. I submitted an application. I, I did not win first place. I got uh, runner up to the South Carolina Collegiate Entrepreneurship Award. Uh, this, this young lady who had a jewelry business at the time got first place. I think she might've had um, a little bit fancier logo or I don't know uh, <clears throat> no resentment there trust me but uh, I was very happy to win I, I got a thousand dollar check for the South Co you know uh, uh, for this collegiate entrepreneurship award I got a thousand dollar check that I was able to reinvest into the business uh, and I got a little plaque I got uh, a nice photo and uh, award ceremony and a really good resume builder for the business uh, it also helped me when I decided what I was going to do after I graduated was to sell the business um, I had developed in Blythewood one of the, my best customers one of the best customers I had was this company called Springdale Outdoor who who had the contract of Cobblestone Park Cobblestone if you don't know is it, it, it turned into Cobblestone Park, but originally it was called the University Club. The, the University Club was a really nice, fancy golf community in Blythewood, South Carolina, uh, that was tied to the University of South Carolina. Um, it had a lot of houses along the golf course, and the common ways, like the entrance and the clubhouse and the, the parks, all of that was considered common areas those were maintained by an outside landscaping company well Springdale Outdoor had the the contract for this cobblestone park so this guy David Gant was the owner of uh, of Springdale he ended up using me on pine straw and the, the entrance ways and the common areas for this cobblestone park and it was a gold mine I mean he would say something like you know yeah I think it's going to be about a thousand bales of pine straw but you know we're so busy with the landscaping and irrigation and planting trees and shrubs why don't you go ahead and spread it for us I said well I charge six dollars a bale and he said that's that'd be fine so I'm sure he was charging them seven <laughs> uh he was making a dollar a bell without even having to touch it but that was a gold mine for me I was able to have my pine straw supplier deliver it directly to Blythewood 
I even have to, you know, load it a couple times on my trailer. And I would have my guys stay out there for days at a time, just spreading pine straw um, and then get one check. He paid well. That was another miracle is that he actually paid on time too. Um, but, but I ended up selling Pine Straw Plus to a guy named Marvin. Uh, Marvin had five boys that were all um, you know, young, young men, I don't know, between 13 and probably 20 years old, that he was looking to have a business that he could um, you know, work for his young boys to make money. And uh, that was great. Uh, I found Marvin through the website bizbuysell.com. You know, B-I-Z-B-U-Y-S-E-L-L.com. I listed my business for sale on a couple of different websites. Uh, Marvin ended up buying the database and the suppliers, the, the, the phone number, and the, the BlackBerry. One of the things that my dad said, because I was kind of going back and forth, you know, I don't know what I have to sell. I'm not sure what I have here. I've got a business. Yeah, I've got a pine straw business. But, you know, I get the pine straw from a couple suppliers. I put it out. They give me a check. You know, it's not really like a business. There's no retail place. It's just a service business. I don't know what there is to sell. And I'll never forget it. My dad said, what all you've got to sell, son, you've got the most important thing you got to sell is a ring and phone. And so I realized the value of the business is the ringing phone, the value of the business, the part that I need to talk up and, and really elaborate on and make sure he understands it. The value is the 737 clients that call once or twice a year for Pine Straw Plus, no matter who it is, if it's Matt or this new guy, to come out and put out the Pine Straw. You know, also as a function of uh, value, I've got these handful of, uh, I had six or eight suppliers that knew me and knew the number and knew where to deliver the Pine Straw to. Uh, I had suppliers that he didn't have to go out and search for four years like I did to, to build up a database of suppliers of reliable, good quality, honest people, well, <laughs> as honest as they could be, um, suppliers. So I ended up selling it to Marvin and I, I worked out a payment plan, I actually struck a deal with him for $19,000. Uh, and that was separate from my truck. I had an F-150 that I had, I had bought. I, at first, I wanted to sell it for like $40,000 because I thought the business was for about twenty, dollars and I thought that the, the truck was about $20,000. And I realized, my dad said, after I couldn't get the first couple people, I tried about nine. I went to lunches and dinners and met with nine different people to try to sell them the business. And this ninth guy named Marvin was the one that ended up buying the business. Um, my wife and I thought he was the best fit. He was the most honest guy. Um, he, he was the Lieutenant of the Richland County canine division. Uh, so he was a police officer that wanted a business on the side for his young boys to run. I thought he was the best fit, but, uh, my dad said, you know, $40,000 is pretty steep. And, and I bet you that the guy that's going to buy this probably already has a truck. He probably already has a mode of tra transportation that he's, that he's already thinking about using. So why don't you change the model and break out of the, the, the package, the sales package, break out the truck. And so I broke out the f-150 and sold it separately to um a, a different person but i decided to sell those in two different locations i listed in the trader the south carolina trader and on the internet i listed the truck and i listed the business for sale 
as a pine straw business.